We're often bombarded with statistical data and with the single number of average. What is the average? Um, we might be reading the newspaper or um, watching, a, um, watching a news show, listening to the radio, uh, watch, looking at something on Facebook, and they talk about here's the average. The average income, the average cost of a house, the average crime rate, the average weight of something. Well, that's just one single number, average. And there are so many ways that we might interpret what that average is. Um, one thing that we want, want to look at, perhaps, is how is that data clustered around the average? That's something we're going to talk about in the next um, couple of lessons. And this one, we're going to think about, maybe you're going to apply for a job at a cupcake factory or a cupcake company, and you see an advertisement in the one ads that shows the average salary for this cupcake company is $43,000 a year. Well, that seems like a pretty good salary to you, and so you think you might go apply for this job, but they might not um, talk about in the ad or in the interview how the incomes are spread out. How is the data spread? Who's making close to $43,000 and how many people are? Or is this data skewed in some way? So why might this be useful? Think about as you're taking in information, you know, how might the spread of data be useful to you as a consumer? So let's take a, bit, a, a closer look at what those salaries might be to have an average income of $43,000 a year. All of these are listed as, these are in thousands, so at the, at the low end we have a couple of $15,000 a year, some $18,000. Of course up here we have um, what the CEO might make and, and the people that are at the top of the company, and of course they're going to make more money. They've invested um, their, their money and resources, and they're, they're in the leadership positions and are going to make more money than those at the bottom of the, um, the, the entry level. But how is the data spread out um, is a very good question. Notice that these are already listed in order, so that's convenient. It's easy for us to see, because I've listed these in order, um, what the minimum and maximum salaries are. It, it gives us a, a quick glance how the data might look if we see, well, look how these incomes are listed. But there are a couple other ways that we could um, visualize more conveniently what the salaries are. A stem and leaf plot uh, gives us a, it's pretty easy to construct and it gives us a quick glance to see um, how that data, how the incomes are distributed in groups of 10. So I'm going to list how many are making incomes that are between 10 and 20,000 or $19,999.99. And then how many are making in the 20s, in the 30,000s, in the 40,000s, and so on. My top income earner is, is 150,000. So I'll need to go all the way up to 15 tens. the very bottom I have 15 tens. So now I'm going to list how many people are making something in the in the tens of thousands. Okay, there's um, one person that makes 15, another person that makes 15, another four people are making $18,000 a year. So I can see that there are six people that make in the teens. Okay. How about the 20s? There's someone who makes 20,000. Two people make 25,000. One person makes 26,000. And one person makes 27,000. In the 30s, two people at 30,000. Two people at 32,000. Three people at 35,000. There's nobody who makes in the 40s, so I'm not going to put any leaves for that stem. I have um, someone who makes $50,000, 
someone who makes $51,000. Nobody makes in the 60s or the 70s, so I won't put any leaves on there. In the 80s, we have someone who makes 80000 and someone who makes 85000 someone who makes 95000 someone who makes 99000 And then we skip all the way to 150000 So this kind of gives a visual of how, if, I, if I'm reading in the paper an average salary of $43,000 a year, I don't, it doesn't show me how that data is clustered like I might look at a stem and leaf plot. Look at all of these people making an income in the 10s, 20s, and 30s. But way down here are a few people making some more money. This is a convenient way to look at this because if I then turn it on its side later on when we look at a curve, I could see um, that the data is really skewed towards the lower income in that company. We'll look at that later, but a stem and leaf plot helps us see some of the distribution. <laughs> Another very convenient way to look at the data is a box and whiskers plot. It's also pretty easy to construct. It's about finding the, a five number summary um, and called quartiles. Um, and we're, we will take a look at what these values are and then graph our box and whisker plot on the next slide. So the minimum value, who's, what's the minimum income? Well again, this is, the numbers are, are listed least to greatest, so the minimum value I can see is 15. Okay, thousand, okay. What's the maximum income? 150,000. Now what's the median value? Well, these are conveniently lined up from smallest to greatest. So what I want to do to find the median is which number is in the very center. Um, the median value happens to be $30,000. The median is also known in this five num number summary as the second quartile. Um, you may or may not use the median of the data set to find the medium of the lower half of the data. Um, it's, it's commonly accepted not to use that as long as we're consistent in collecting our data. Um, I don't think there's a set rule, but we're going to not use that number 30 to find the median of the lower half of the data. Okay, so the median of the lower half of the data um, is right here between these two values, and that is going to be $19,000. Okay. The median of the upper half of the data is between these two values, and that's at $50,500. So uh, we have a minimum value, a maximum value, and then how are the um, how are these number sets divided between uh, in the incomes in between those? The median income, or our minimum value, was at 15. So I'm going to mark 15 as the very minimum, very minimum income, and the maximum is at 15, 150,000. Our first quartile was at 19, and this is, I'm scaling this by 10. So if this is 15, our first quartile begins at 19,000, right? They're almost at 20. The median, if you remember, was at 30,000. That's the second quartile. And the third quartile was at about 51,000. So this, here's my box, which will show how the middle data is clustered about the median, and then these whiskers show how far below that cluster and how far above the extreme values are. So if I look at this box and whisker plot, very simple to sketch, it gives me an idea about how the data is clustered when I read $43,000 in the newspaper. As, an, as the average income, I see that some people are making much more than $43,000. And I might ask in my interview, what, are, what is the range of salaries? So that I could have some more information um, 
to learn about the incomes of that company.